So Nisha, what did you have for breakfast today? I had a cheese panini. <laughs> oh. I had a cup of coffee and a multivitamin. Because <laughs> I'm old We're now so and that's all, can, that's all I can have. England has famously been ruled by a number of extraordinarily fat fucks, one of the fattest on record being King George IV, a man so large and in charge, his own wife compared him to a feather bed and his closest friends compared him to a sausage. Oh God. <laughs> God, what an intro. <laughs> a fucky sausage. A fact that's unsurprising given that King George IV would routinely eat two pigeons for breakfast every day. Oh God, pigeons. <laughs> I guess, like, pigeons are a food you eat. It's just that like, we associate them with, like, you know, the flying disease rats. But, like, you know, yeah. like, pigeons are fine. They're a fine thing to eat. I wouldn't eat two of them, and I definitely wouldn't eat them for fucking breakfast. No. But I've definitely eaten pigeon before, and it's all right. I've never had it. Well, because I used to work in a restaurant. I could tell this story. And um, they were preparing pigeons. Like, just, like, the little ones are, like, super fucking tiny pigeons. And I asked for a pigeon drumstick. <laughs> And I'll tell you what, no drumstick is sadder than the pigeon drumstick. <laughs> it was absolutely tiny. It's like, it's so funny. It's like uh, we had quails in that restaurant, so I had a quail drumstick. And it's like, just to say I had one, the quail drumstick. Okay, so King George was very, very fat. Yes, yeah, specifically King George IV is the king we're talking about today. He was very, very large and very much in charge, but only when he got into his 50s. He was famously the king who was only king for a couple of years because his dad just refused to fucking die. Isn't that weird how it's mirrored today? But um, he's also as well the, the King George that's in Horrible Histories. Oh, okay. From, from perhaps, I'd say, one of the most famous moments on this channel. Um, shut up, dickwig or thickwig. I'm <laughs> dickwig. still not sure what it is, but he's that king. The other one who celebrates when his dad dies. Yeah. It's like, dad's dead, dad's dead. Shut up, thickwig or dickwig. We'll never know. Are you sure you can't squeeze out just a small tear? Certainly not, Thickwig! But like many kings of old, King George IV lived in the most obscene luxury and indulged himself with wine and meat and all manner of sweet treats for basically his entire life, uh, which saw his weight balloon to almost 300 pounds by the end of his life, um, which sounds like bad like you know there are people today who are large and that will keep in mind this is like a couple hundred years ago when people on average were much shorter so weighing 300 fucking pounds was a bigger deal than it was and i think king george is one of the fattest kings to have ever ruled england and he's only edged out by king henry the eighth a king who would only be remembered for being massively fat if not for the fact he also had six wives a, a famous fact but not facts that people throw around like he still holds the record for most turkey legs ever eaten in one sitting or something like that <laughs> Sounds like there's a food competition you do, like hot dog eating challenge. <laughs> uh, he would have annihilated those because obviously all he did was sit and fucking eat because that's like, you know, he's the king, he can do what the fuck he wants. And King George was the same, where he would just sit and eat all fucking day. Uh, which will bring us to the two pigeons for breakfast. But first, we have to talk about what other people thought of King George. King George the Fourth was a king, so surely yeah. people would be nice about him, even though he was overweight. Yeah, you'd think, wouldn't you? Like people might, you know, talk about him behind his back, but surely to his face or in the press, people would be polite about the king's weight. And the answer is no, they weren't. King George the Fourth was not a popular king because he lived in such obscene luxury, and people weren't a fan of that. For example, newspapers at the time he was king would write articles commending him on and I quote, doggedly clinging to life, despite being so tremendously fat. Oh God. <laughs> like, that's in the papers when he's alive. Like imagine opening up a paper and reading. Um, it's quite impressive that the king has somehow clung to life despite being such a fat piece of shit. <laughs> Well, my favourite story is when the Duke of Wellington met the King and was asked after the fact what he thought about the meeting. And he just stood for a few, and he struggled to find any words. To, you know, to compliment the king, because he couldn't think oh of anything to say. And he said, well, it's really impressive how much he ate, given that he's basically bedridden and disabled due to how fat he is. <laughs> and that's that's the only compliment he could muster for you him. You could just say, oh, he's an all right bloke, you know. No. And this is where the two pigeons for breakfast comes from. Because this quote from the Duke of Wellington, which will no doubt be in a fat bar below, I'm going to paraphrase now in a much funnier way. He says, like, yeah, he's, uh, I, it's really impressive. He adds a pie... T -t -t 
two pigeons, um, a bottle of wine, some champagne, some brandy, all for breakfast. It was really impressive, all things considered. <laughs> just, just for breakfast. <laughs> he had wine and champagne, pigeons and, and a pie. And a, oh and my a god, pie. that's just how. <laughs> And keep in mind as well, like, that was his breakfast, and then in the evening he would feast. And there's an idea of the sheer amount of food King George and the rest of his court ate. Um, popular wisdom at the time posited that King George IV's kitchen um, contained the single largest collection of food on earth. <laughs> Just imagining, and, like, cage pigeons. <laughs> like, it had an almost ungodly amount of food in it, like, um, because, like, the National Archives have records from the time about the deliveries they would receive. It's like, oh, like five tons of meat, not including sausage. Not not including like sort of five tons, then the sausage on top of that. And oh like God. the king very famously once dined in his kitchen because he couldn't be asked waiting for the food to get to him. <laughs> and it's one of the one of the few times in history the king has ever eaten in the kitchen. Like he went to, he basically <laughs> did that, he raided awesome. the kitchen. He raided the kitchen, that's how fast he was. Yeah, not so much as well, he was also because he was so like just massively like unbelievably overweight, he had a multitude of health problems um, that he tried to alleviate with drugs. So he was also peeled off his tits the entire time as well. And I don't think anything sums up how massively overweight and just ungainly this man was. More than the fact, it reportedly took his servants three hours to get him into his whalebone corset. Jesus. Um, which was pulled so tight, he almost fainted at his own coronation. And um, there's a popular anecdote from the time said that, oh, the king's stomach hung below his knees. Oh, no. Yeah. And uh, there are also some other choice anecdotes that I want to talk about now. So you mentioned earlier that his wife compared him to a mattress. Yeah, specifically, his wife said that um, lying on the king felt like lying on a great feather bed. So, like, you know, this big, soft, um, feathery mattress. But there's an even better quote from his wife from the first time they met. Back then... Um, a marriage would be arranged, and then you'd meet each other basically on the wedding day. Oh God, <laughs> According no. to history, the literal first thing uh, King George the Fourth's wife said to him upon meeting him was, "He is very fat and not at all as handsome as his portrait." <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing she said. She's been catfished. <laughs> she, she said it to his fucking face, like he is very fat and not at all as tall as his portrait. Like, so that's proof that people have been lying about what they look like with dating for like basically hundreds of years. So he lied with his portrait. People wondering about that, just official portraits that hung with generally a younger King George who was known as being quite a handsome and tall man. The problem was that, you know, he just indulged his sweet tooth way too much and he lost all that. Same like King Henry VIII. And that reminds me a little bit of a story told about Queen Elizabeth. Uh, not the one who's on the throne now, but the one from Elizabethan times. And it is that she only ever liked one portrait done of her. So when portrait artists would come in to paint her portrait, she'd tell them to just paint the portrait she already had and do it again. <laughs> she'd just say, do that one again. Which is like the historical equivalent of taking the same like selfie every time. Do you know those people who take a selfie from the same angle every single time, no matter where they are? That's like, you know, the historical equivalent of that. That's just remind me of, um, you know, when I think it's, pronounced Bebo. I always called it Bebo, but Bebo, Bebo yeah. was a thing. <laughs> yeah. um, I had a friend on there who she had albums full of pictures of herself, literally in the same location, um, just from slightly different angles, like just selfies from slightly different yeah. angles. And there were like albums of 40 photos of her just stood there taking pictures from all these different angles. I'm like, fucking hell. <laughs> I just think it's really interesting as a historical precedent for that kind of behaviour, of people only liking one real image of themselves. So I think we've all met that person who still uses a Facebook profile from like five years ago because it's the only photo of themselves they like. And I'm sure there's plenty of people watching this right now who've maybe dabbled in online dating who've met someone who's using an older photo or perhaps like, you know, a maybe not completely accurate or truthful photo. For those people, I hope it's interesting to learn that this is a thing that's been going on for hundreds of fucking years, and it is so prevalent that even royalty dabbled in it. I'm just um, thinking about how a lot of people use filters yeah. on, the, on their selfies, and like, they use a dog filter and stuff like that. I'm imagining someone having a por portrait painted back then and thought, oh, can you just put the dog filter on and just draw <laughs> like this dog ears on? <laughs> Well, you had stuff like that, didn't you? Where um, you would have people posing in photos in like ridiculous scenarios, like uh, King Henry VIII. He would always pose with his giant fucking codpiece on. 
So you just had this massive fucking cod piece, like front and center in all of his photos, <laughs> all the photos, these portraits. You get that great one of the meme image, isn't it? Of like the guy who did a portrait going, yeah, pointing at the, the portrait maker. Oh, and that's yeah. why that, like, that one became a meme, because the guy was like, fuck it, if I'm gonna have a portrait taken, I want it to show me being a boss. And he's like, yeah. I don't know who that is, but there's a fat guy below saying, the origins of that, that's a real historical portrait of a real dude who's like, fuck it, I just want to look like a boss in my photo. Okay, so if we bring it back to King George IV. Yes. When was it that he started to put on a lot of weight? Now, it's around his teenage years when he started drinking. Uh, because King George III, King George IV, uh, King George IV, King George IV's father, uh, hopefully people can forgive that, <laughs> a little <laughs> slip of the tongue, a little Freudian slip there, um, was keenly aware that members of his bloodline um, got very, very, very fat um, as a result of their lifestyle and the fact that you know, they had unlimited access to very, very rich foods. And he tried his damnest to make sure that his son was not overweight. And uh, he put him on a very, very strict diet. A diet that was so strict, according to historical record, that when King George IV was served a pie, his father forbade him from eating the filling and would only allow him to eat the crusts. Oh no. <laughs> so he'd get served a slice of pie, could eat the crust, and then a servant would throw the rest of the pie away. <laughs> Bloody hell. How fucking rough is that? That is rough, isn't it? And King George III was reportedly very Spartan in his eating habits and would only eat unseasoned plain mutton or beef and would very occasionally splash out and eat boiled chicken. Ugh. Yeah. A nice plate of boiled chicken with a cup of coffee. That doesn't sound very good. Yeah, it doesn't sound very good, but like he was aware, look, I've got to go to all these functions where I have to drink a lot of alcohol, I don't want to gain weight. As you might imagine, the then prince, George IV, did not like the fact that he wasn't allowed to eat, drink, and be merry. So what he would do is go and stay with his uncles and just drink and eat beef and pies and shit like that, which made him gain weight. I don't blame him, to be honest. If you're having to live off pie crusts and boiled chicken... <laughs> And his father, to be fair, had a point, because King George IV is now known as one of the fattest kings England ever had. And he died as a result of his massive fucking gut. <laughs> there was just something so funny about the image of just someone sitting down to a nice slice of pie. And it's like, you know, we like to eat the crust. Because it reminds me a little bit of when I was uh, looking after my sister once, many years ago. And I took her to McDonald's. So she was like, I think like eight at the time, something like that. And I said, oh, what do you want? She said, oh, um, a Happy Meal. But she didn't specify what she wanted from the Happy Meal. So I went up and I got her a Happy Meal with fish fingers, carrot sticks and milk. Oh, no. <laughs> to put it in the box, took it back to where she was sat, gave her it. And she opened, I'll never forget, because it makes me laugh every time I think of it. She opened it up and went, what the hell is this? <laughs> and I went, that's a Happy Meal. And I pulled out a Big Mac. <laughs> it's the hardest I've ever felt. Oh, that's so funny though. <laughs> Uh, it, like, it was worth it was worth like the three and a half hour strop she threw over that just to see the look on her face because she was so fucking mad. It's not exactly the same, but yesterday, um Adam was nipping downstairs and said, Do you want anything? Mm -hmm. Like any snacks no. or anything, bring it in. And I was like, Oh, it surprised me. And he came back with nothing. And I was like, Why are you that got me anything? Surprise. And he was like, Oh, it was a surprise. <laughs> oh it's, it's so rough. Oh, yeah, King George IV, tremendous farce. 